Hello, this is Franco Cabral broadcasting from the Honest Liar podcast, a conversation around finding the inner liar within all of us and leveraging the truth to create expansion across all areas of your life. Today's topic is this. I am in a shitty ass mood. Yesterday, I went to go pick up my daughter, Sienna, after a long day of back to back meetings all day long. I actually had a great day at work, a lot of productivity, got accomplished, many of the things that I desired to do. We had an excellent sales day, and I was excited to go pick up my daughter as it was my day to pick up the kids. I walk in to pick up Sienna at her school, and I was received with this awesome hug. She's in a great space, and she was telling me about her day, and we were off to go pick up my little son, uh, Adrian, who's two at this time. And she was telling me about the day, and we were having a nice ride over to pick up Adrian. I then pick up Adrian, and when they both get in the car, for whatever reason, uh, they just weren't jiving as well as they normally do. And kids will be kids sometimes, and everything was a fight. First, the fight started with who was going to hold Jesse from Toy Story. Then my son Adrian, who recently got some of these toys, while he was uh, sitting, wanted every toy, didn't want to share. So this became me trying to talk them into sharing while driving. As we then hit traffic, I start to get frustrated because I realize that it's getting a little late and dinner time is coming soon. So my son uh, starts asking for food, which I have no food because daddy was not prepared in the car. And slowly, one thing after the next started happening, and my great mood that I was having all day started deteriorating really, really fast. We're stuck in traffic, still not home yet, and my son, who's potty training, uh, starts yelling, pee-pee, pee-pee. Daddy's not prepared because daddy doesn't have a potty that we can go portable, and we're stuck in traffic. So now I'm freaking out that he's going to pee in the car. I didn't have a mat to put under him so that at least it would repel some of the the pee if he decided to pee. And while this is happening, my daughter is asking me to play music, of which I didn't have that music on my phone because mommy has that music on her phone. So one thing after another keeps happening, and I'm just not prepared for what's happening, and my children are slowly colliding on my frame. Uh, Reality was I didn't know at the time I didn't have any frame. I had a very weak frame at best. So we get home. As we get home, my dogs are a little bit more rowdy than normal. Again, all of this is normal stuff, and I can hear myself speaking to myself in the moment saying, Franco, get your shit together. This is all normal stuff. Take a deep breath and regroup. But despite the fact that I could hear myself talking to myself, One thing after another kept irritating the shit out of me, and I kept getting into an even shittier mood one thing after the next. So it's dinner time. I decide to go feed my kids, and nobody wants to eat what daddy is cooking. So I get irritated even more. I'm trying to feed them. It's no, it's yelling, it's screaming. Nobody's listening to me, and it was utter chaos in the house. Then my wife walks in the door and says to me, well, what's going on? And... She didn't say it from a malicious place. She wanted to help. She had every good intention to help, but I immediately got triggered by the fact that I felt like she was judging me. So my frame collapsed a little bit more. And it was one thing after the next till finally I told my wife, I'm going upstairs. I need some space. And I decided to go to sleep. I was exhausted. And what I didn't think about in the time was how long and how many days I'd been running nonstop. The lie that I told myself was that my kids are being difficult. I don't understand why they're so rowdy. The next lie I told myself was my wife doesn't understand. She's judging me. She thinks I'm a shitty father. You know, I don't have it under control. Tonight was supposed to be her night to have some space. And all the stories kept coming in. When the truth was that my tank was empty. I was feeling completely burnt out. And I'd been running for a while within my business, family. We had a crazy weekend. 
working crazy hours. I had two days in a row putting in about 14, 15 hours. And the weekend was no space to recover. And the week before that was busy. And the weekend before that was busy. And as I started reflecting this morning, I started to think, well, why did this happen? Why was it that I was so irritable and I was so quick to snap at my kids? I didn't like the person that I was last night. I was, I was, I was angry. I was, I was yelling. I wasn't well thought out. I, I heard myself speaking to myself, get my shit together, but I couldn't stop it. And then the guilt started to set in. And I started feeling like, shit, wow, you know, I, I wasn't present with my kids. My wife was just trying to help. And in the past, this guilt and shame has taken its own story and life on itself because I used to not deal with it in the moment as it's coming up. Thankfully, I this morning, I stacked it. And this is a journal process that I'll teach and talk about at another time, not the purpose of today's podcast, But I was able to get clarity on what was really going on for me. And here's where the lesson or the reminder of the lesson that came up for me that I want to share with you today. I realized that I was on empty. And I started understanding, well, why am I on empty? Or thinking about why am I feeling so burnt out? Is it, you know, did I just take on too much? Why am I feeling overwhelmed? And what it came down to was that I realized I hadn't done anything for myself and created space for me in a while. Early on, when I started this Warrior's Way process and learning about the Warrior's Way, one of the concepts that I learned easy uh, early on uh, was that the king eats first. And I find myself still forgetting this at times. And this is essentially what happened. So if you've ever been on a plane, you probably have heard the instructions, put your oxygen mask on first before looking to put your family's oxygen mask, even if you have kids. Because ultimately, if you stop breathing, you're not going to be able to help anybody. So taking that process into a more tactical approach, I learned this concept of dating myself. And for a very long time, I've been very consistent about creating dates for myself. And my dates consist of, for me, things that I enjoy doing that I wouldn't normally do Otherwise, like a massage, going on a floating session, uh, going on a long hike, going to the Buddhist temple, things that I enjoy that make me happy that are truly for me and nobody else. And what I found over time is by doing these things, I get a recharge and I'm actually able to produce more. I'm able to hold more space for my family. I'm able to create more presence. But when I don't, date myself and create space for myself, after what usually is about two to three weeks period for me, I get to this place of burnout. And what's worse for me is in this place of burnout, I get to this place where I start to resent everybody. I resent my children. I resent my wife. I resent my employees. And the reality is I'm the only person I should be upset with is myself. But it goes outwardly first to blame. And I start blaming other people because they're colliding on my space. But only I can allow anybody else to collide on my frame. And they weren't even colliding on my frame because I hadn't actually set a frame of date night around myself for the last few weeks. And as I was reflecting, my course correction immediately became, it's time to set a date night for myself. Because had I felt like there was some space for me and I got that recharge, I know that I would have been better at shifting in the moment and not been so triggered by my kids and my wife because they weren't actually being that difficult. They were being kids. And that's what kids do. And on any other night, when I wasn't in that weak frame, I've dealt with that powerfully. My wife was actually being super supportive. And I'm grateful for the way that she showed up, despite the fact that I was a bit of a lunatic. She held space for me because I couldn't hold space for myself at that time. So my course correction is that I'm going to be going on a floating session this week, a floating date with myself, which if you don't know about floating, you should definitely look it up. 
Basically, you're in a meditative state for about an hour in a float tank that has uh, water and a few thousand pounds of sodium, and you become buoyant and you float. Zero gravity or something like that. But the meditative state that that brings me in, that recharge, and it's something more importantly that I enjoy. So whether you enjoy floating or not, it's really this process of a date with yourself is about doing something that you typically wouldn't do for yourself that you really enjoy. And it's time with you that gives you a recharge. But also just the sheer fact of knowing that I scheduled a date for myself immediately shifted my frame from a place of feeling like I'm not important to, okay, I have a date coming up and there's space that's important to me, which means I'm important and I'm filling my tank. I am the only one that can fill my tank. You are the only one that can fill your tank. And so often we look to our loved ones or others to create the space for us when that's not really their responsibility. And then we get triggered by them because they keep asking for us to do things. Or we want to do things for the people we love, and we keep doing and doing and doing to the place that we feel burnt out. And we feel like, what about me? At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to take care of yourself. And that was the reminder that I got from this lesson of being in a shitty-ass mood. So my ask for you is, think about it. When was the last time you went on a date for yourself, with yourself, by yourself, where you created some space to show yourself some love and do something that you love to do? And if it's been a long time, then it's time to course correct that. Every week, I do dates when I'm sticking to my frame. And typically, I enjoy doing them most in the beginning of the week. And it mentally tells me that I'm important and I come first. The king eats first. Because if I don't eat or I don't put my oxygen mask, then there's, I'm not going to be good for my family. I'm not going to be able to be the leader that I want to be because eventually I'm just going to become resentful, burn out, and then I'm not going to be any good for anybody. So if you haven't done this in a while, it's time to put your oxygen mask on. Appreciate the space, listening to the podcast. And again, if you find value in this, please take the time to rate, review, and share. The reviews and the comments make a big difference in being able to share more light. And that's the purpose of this podcast for me, is to teach others how I went into the dark to find my light, to leverage that so hopefully you can find more light for yourself in your life in the dark. Have a wonderful day, everyone.